This is 911. State your emergency. Hello? I can't help you if I don't know where you're at, honey. Where are you at? Where are you? I need as many units as I can get for Fairfield Road. Give me the numbers. 911, what's your emergency? Hey friends, it's Fletch from Vice President of Public Safety Solutions at 911 Inform. Welcome to this new podcast series, Off the Cuff, Confessions of an EMP. Brought to you by 911 Inform, delivering next generation 911 services for the enterprise today and making every second count. In this series, we're going to be talking to ENPs that have been on the job for years, as well as those brand new ENPs that have just passed the test. We'll dig in and have an in-depth conversation and find out what the ENP certification means to them. We'll talk about why they did it, what it means for their career, and what they did to pass the exam. Industry certifications are important to industry professionals, and the ENP certification is one that's admired by many in public safety. So join me as we find out exactly what makes an ENP tick in this Off the Cuff podcast series, Confessions of an ENP. Hey, it's Fletch. Welcome to this episode of Off the Cuff, True Confessions of an ENP. Today, we're sitting down with Rebecca Biederman from uh, Laverne PD out in California in the LA area. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So welcome to the world of ENP. (laughs) When did you sit down for your test? Um, beginning of February. Okay. What did you think? Um, it was the hardest test I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> you know, I get to write the questions for the test. So there's there's this devious side of me that when people say, it was the <laughs> hardest test I've ever taken. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Means yeah, we did our job. But it was a, it was a good test though, right? It was. It was a really good experience. It was it was one of those things that when I got done, honestly, I didn't think I passed. Really? I, yeah. Um, and then when I got, you know, because I did it remotely. So when I got the little green circle that said tentative pass, I think I did a little a little <laughs> jig here in my office. So. The happy dance. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. When I took my first one, um, you got the... You, you, the proctor told you pass or fail, mm-hmm. but then you had to wait about two weeks to get your official certification back. And uh, then you knew that you passed. And I think you still have to wait now for the official. Yeah, you do. Because we go yeah. through and they validate. And what they do, um, PTC, Professional Testing Corp, they'll go through and they'll look at the statistics of the test. And if so many people got a question wrong, They'll pull that question and they'll look at it and then we'll review it and go, okay, why did so many people get it right? Why did so many people get it wrong? Were there, was there one question that had two answers that could have been correct? And Mm -hmm. one was more than the other, but an overwhelming number of people did the other one. And then we sit down and we go, okay, well, did we cause that by how we asked it or whatever? And that's why you'll see every once in a while, a question that was wrong will get marked right, and a question that was right will get marked wrong. Doesn't happen that often, but it could happen. Yeah. So that's why they always say provisional. But there's nothing like that feeling though when you when you get told that yeah. you passed, right? It was, it was definitely a, a huge sigh of relief. I was actually getting ready to go on vacation like two days later. So I was I was definitely uh, excited to get that that provisional pass. Cool. The um, So how long did you study before you took the test? So I actually had purchased all the study material and um, started looking at it probably about, gosh, probably a year and a half before. Really? Um, and I didn't, I kind of just glanced through it. I didn't really do a whole lot with it. Um, And then I ended up getting accepted to the Sherman Block Supervisory Leadership Institute course. Um, And so that kind of shifted my my timeline a little bit. Sure. Um, Because I I had been told that the EMP was a very in-depth and required a lot of studying and and time, which SLI did as well. Um, And so um, I completed SLI. And then once I got done with that, I'm like, okay, it's time to get back on the, back on the EMP track. 
So I had taken the mission critical study group uh, several months, probably, probably about 10 months before I actually took the test. And um, Louisa was kind enough to send me all of the recordings and all of the, um, the paperwork and all that stuff. So I just went through those again, um, studied that. I did a lot of study, study guides online. And there's a couple of Quizlet ones that were really good. Um, my poor husband had to sit through flashcards with me. In fact, I think I've still got my flashcards sitting out of there. <laughs> um, but I think, I think my hardcore studying was probably about three months. Okay. That's cool. So you're lucky with all this Quizlet stuff. When I took mine, uh, you know, we had, a, it was stone chiseled tablets and <laughs> you know, cave wall paintings. <laughs> yeah. I, fortunately I did have a couple of people who have had already taken it. Um, and so some of the things that I had, I had questions about, or, you know, I wasn't, wasn't real sure what, you know, what was being looked for. I was able to reach out to some of those people and say, okay, tell me this in plain English. Cause I'm not understanding what I'm reading. Right. Right. So, um, my, my former supervisor, um, Leslie Whittem was, uh, was kind of my, my biggest cheerleader throughout it all. So she was, she was walking me through a lot of it. No, that's cool. You, you've got to have a study buddy. Um, it really helps out a lot. And, you know, you could be, in this industry for 28 years and you'll get tripped up on the technology side or you'll get tri tripped up on the legislative side. Um, you know, there's just so many facets to the test. It doesn't really matter how long you've been in the business. It's just a massive all encompassing, but that's the whole benefit or that's the whole purpose of the program. It's an emergency number professional. It, it says I am a professional in this industry and I know it top to bottom. What did, what do you think you did the worst and the best on? Um, I think I probably struggled the most with the, uh, the telephony and the next gen 911 stuff. Um, I still struggle with some of the next gen stuff. Um, well, it's all acronyms, right? It is. I, mean, I, I live that every day and, and that stuff is like nothing to me, but then I got to remember all the legislative stuff and that blows my head apart. Yeah. I, I think I know, I understand the concept. I, I think I'm more conceptual than mechanical probably. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a, a lot of knowing that technical side of it is more the, the mechanical technical aspect. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that's probably what I struggled with the most, um, you know, that and trying to remember what I learned about telephony 20, a lot of years ago. Um, and so um, as far as the legislation, I think I actually did pretty good with that. I, I have really weird ways of studying. I make acronyms and phrases and really weird stuff. So a lot of that stuff I was able to kind of have my own little tricks in my head of how to remember them. Um, I think I did pretty good on uh, the management stuff. And I think a lot of that was due to just coming out of the SLI class. Right. Um, I think that background definitely helped me with the legislative part of it. Um, you know, cause that's what we spent. Well, it was supposed to be eight months, but thanks to COVID, it took us about 13. Um, to get done, but we, we spent a very long time talking about that stuff, you know, management, leadership, all that kind of stuff. So, um, those were what I think were kind of my, my strengths and weaknesses, so to speak. Are you going for any others like your CMCP or RPL or anything? So I just put in for CMCP. Mm -hmm. Um, it's with administration now, um, getting approval. I'm hoping to take the class at Nina in June. Okay, that's great. My, that's my goal. Our agency is um, starting to look at potentially partnering with some other agencies in the area. And so the consolidation piece of that is is something I definitely need to be educated on. Um, 
I've worked at a consolidated agency, so I do have that background, um, which I think will be beneficial for me. Um, but doing it from the management side, that'll be kind of where where the the CMCP will definitely be helpful for me. How many years do you have in the business? Twenty eight. Wow, you started when? Wait, like five or six? I was five. Yeah, You're five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. <laughs> You've aged very well. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good a, lot of lolly, a lot of lollipops back then. <laughs> so you started out, it, what was your first position? Just dispatch? I worked in, uh, I was actually an explorer. I started when I was 15 as an explorer. Good for you. So I did that for a couple of years. And then. So what, uh, what was the explorer program like back then? What, what did they do? Um, we worked a lot of events we did a lot of traffic control um we were glorified gophers of course <laughs> you know washed the cars and cleaned up the station and all that kind of stuff but you know what that's that's how you learn that's how you you know that, that's how the industry gets into your blood yeah absolutely and um my dad worked at the police department and so I, I knew I wanted to do something in law enforcement, but I didn't want to be a cop. I had, I had no desire. Um, I had no desire to be an officer. And so um, while my counterparts were doing their ride alongs and all that stuff, I did sit alongs and dispatch. Okay. Um, and I had a couple of the dispatchers uh, at, at my first agency kind of take me under their wing and taught me. So I sat in on my own time and, um, learned. I put myself through the dispatch post dispatch Academy, um, at golden West. Um, I did that on a semester long basis and, and then I got hired and I, like I, I tell people it was meant to be a college job. Um, you know, and here I am sending my, my son to college here pretty soon. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. I, and you have a son even. Wow. You started, I do. I have two. You started when you were five. You started yeah. very everything very early. Yeah, I have two of them. So what do they think? Do they, you know, I mean, obviously now they understand what you do, but growing up, did they understand what you did? My youngest son had a phrase that he would always tell me. Um, we've, we've never had the typical you know, holidays or birthdays or any of that kind of stuff. Cause I've always worked shift work, obviously. And, um, so they've, they've kind of never really known any different. Um, and when I would feel bad about, you know, having to leave or, or something like that, my, my younger son would always tell me, mom, just go save lives, just go save lives. <laughs> and so, um, they, they've always been super, super supportive. And, you know, now that I'm on a, normal schedule um you know we, we celebrate something on the actual holiday and they're like wait what why yeah. why are we celebrating today i don't i don't get it it's not right so um did your kids ever tell you when you're having an argument i'm gonna call 911 no they would more say that um i know how to get a hold of you i just dial 911. <laughs> no, no it doesn't really work that way honey sorry <laughs> my daughter said to me we were having an argument and she said, I'm going to call 911. I'm like, you can't own call 911. Daddy owns 911. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> awesome. I do tell my kids that I get to tell cops where to go. There you go. There you go. They have to listen to me. So what are they doing for their career? What do, what do they have their sights on? Are they looking at public safety or are they no. looking at normal lives? Well, my younger one is. My younger one wants to be a firefighter Okay. Um, after, after the Marine Corps. He wants to go in the Marines and then be a firefighter. Good for him. Um, my older son is getting into art and architecture. So he's no no law enforcement for him, which is which is fine. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, hey, it, it's either in your blood or it's not in your blood. So, yeah. you know, you got to follow your own passions. So studying, you had a lot of time to study because of, you know, you're, you, just the way you approached all of this. What are some of the, the tricks and tips that you used to get the content down? Um, I went through 
I went through a lot of the um, sample tests, uh, some of them that were sent to me by uh, mission critical partners, um, and then some that I had found online. Um, and I would do flashcards with those. Um, I would make flashcards of the acronyms because there's thousands of acronyms, it felt like. <laughs> Um, thousands of acronyms would they reduce it oh yeah yeah <laughs> um kind of, and kind of the way that i created my my flashcards was as i went through the study sessions i would write down things that i didn't know and then i would go up and i would look them up or you know research them and then make that into into a flashcard and so you know going through those um the practice test definitely helped because it kind of gave me a a little bit of an idea of what format of question to mm -hmm. expect, you know, because when you're looking at all of the material, I think you, it, it's definitely overwhelming looking at all of the material because you're like, what, what are they going to ask? How are they going to ask me this? And so the, the practice tests definitely were, were helpful for me. Right. That's the one thing, I mean, every year uh, on the, on the Nina Institute board, we go through and we go through the question bank and we pick out the questions for the two different tests coming up over the next year. And then we sit and take those tests. So we make sure the answers match up with the questions. Nothing's changed. It's all still relevant. But we also sit there and we, we look at the past history on whether it was an easy question or a hard question. And, you know, we try to kind of like level things out a little bit as much. And I love taking the easy questions and making them hard <laughs> and coming up with the trick distractors. It's really, that's what I find. I, I have a lot of fun with that every single year. The one thing that I did find was interesting was as I went through it, there were some questions that kind of answered a previous question. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one thing that like I, and I really liked on the, um, the, the format, the, um, I, I can't remember the name of the company, but, um, you know, how you can, you can flag a question, right. you know, to yeah. go back to it and look at it later or something like that. So, you know, I would flag questions that I wasn't a hundred percent sure of the answer on. And there was a couple of times where, as I moved through the test, I would be like, Oh, there's what that acronym means. I'm going to go back to that one because I just, I remember that, or, you know, there was, yep. there was several of those type of things where um, other questions sort of clarified the original question that, that I was looking at. So you take tests like I do. I go through and I blow through everything and I just bang off the easy questions that I know and everything that I have to stop and think about, I put to the side and then I go back and I redo those questions and then think about them and, and go through and answer them. Not a lot of people do it that way. I find just by interviewing everybody, the most common way people take the test is they go through it question by question by question, and they don't move on until they answer that one. I'm not sure. I don't like that for me because I would be continuously worried. Am I going to finish? Yeah. Yeah, I, I did, I went through and I, I did answer and there were some of them, you know, that I wasn't sure about and I would go ahead and answer them. Yep. Um, but then I would flag them knowing that I wanted to go back and think about it more or, you know, reconsider it. I, you know, the old adage of, you know, your first response is usually the correct one. Right. I don't believe that. I, I definitely feel like I always need to go back and at least double check it. You know, I think sure probably that's correctly. true most of the time, but, you know, if, if by going through such a large test like that, you're going to find other things that make you re-remember, if you will, or clarify. And you're like, oh, gee, it wasn't the right question or the right answer because I wasn't thinking about the question properly. Mm -hmm. I don't consider that not going with your first intuition. You were, you were misguided the way you read it, and mm -hmm. now you've changed your mind there. So I'm with you. <laughs> it worked. That's, that's not the most common way, though. Yeah, I, I, that doesn't surprise me. I'm not common. <laughs> <laughs> so what, uh, 
what was the reaction once you once you got your your uh, your certification? What was your reaction at home and at work? Um, well, work was mad that I didn't tell them. Um, I I kind of felt that it was some. That, well, kind of the first reason I didn't really tell anybody is because if I didn't pass, I didn't want to have to tell anybody that I didn't pass. <laughs> they didn't um, even know you were taking the exam. Well, oh, wow. my my direct supervisor did. But um, when uh, Kel Nina posted it on uh, LinkedIn, I had several <laughs> people come out to me going, why didn't you tell us that you did this? I'm like, I don't know. I just didn't. I did it for me. That's cool. Um, my husband was very proud of me. Um, I I texted several of my supporters, you know, saying, oh, my God, I did it. He never texted me. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm just finding I'm out sorry. now. Sorry. <laughs> what did your husband do? Um, he's a heavy equipment operator. Okay. Big boy Tonka toys. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, see, that's a cool job. It's like somebody that's totally admitting, yes, I've never grown up. I just play with more expensive stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he calls them big boy Tonka toys. There you go. I love yeah. it. I love it. You know, you can, you can, with a job like that, you can go do whatever you want, wherever you want. And yep, nobody absolutely. can say shit. <laughs> absolutely. That's cool. And if you ever want a swimming pool, just say, hey, honey, bring home, bring work home with you. Today. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've tried to get him to bring home a crane so he can put a jacuzzi in my backyard. But so far, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been successful with that one. Nice. So finally, when, when, when work found out, did they have a little celebration for it? By the way, kudos to Cal Nina for posting that. I think yeah, that's so that, cool. was, that was neat. That was very neat. What'd they do? Just put a post on LinkedIn or? Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a post on LinkedIn. Okay. I I've yeah. seen, I've seen agencies do press releases. Um, you know, some of the, some of them have gone through and almost made it an event if, especially if they had a couple of people go through it simultaneously, that's really good for the public to understand that the agency's being responsive, you're being responsive as an individual. You know, it, it's really for them, right? Yeah, they did that. They did a social media post and things like that with our um, with my SLI graduation. So that was that was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. So. So where do you want to take your career from here? What are your aspirations? I want to teach. Teach any what public safety? Yeah. Okay. So I currently I currently teach at our at two of our local colleges for the dispatch academy, um, and I've presented at a couple of conferences. Um, I actually got accepted to present at Nina again this year. Oh, excellent! So I'm what excited are you, what are you about doing? that. Um, I have two different classes. One of them is so you want to be a supervisor or. Be a supervisor, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> um, and then the other one is who's running your rodeo. Nice. So talking about different personalities and dispatch and how to manage and lead them. Wow, I'm I'm definitely gonna check those out. Awesome. So. Yeah, I got I got the chance to present last year too, which was really neat. Um, and I met some amazing, amazing people last year in Columbus. So I think, I think being able to be a part of that was definitely one of the things that reaffirmed that I wanted to go ahead and, you know, kind of take this next step cool. in my, in my career. Um, my, my former supervisor, Leslie has been um, encouraging me to do it for a very long time. And so I was, I finally did it. And I, I was glad that I did. No, that's cool. My daughter lives just down in Nashville. So she is definitely coming up to Louisville and uh, Louisville, excuse me. Yeah. And, um, you know, she's going to, you know, it's pretty funny when you, when you're, your kid, she's 23. I'll, I'll, I'll show you all the good places to go drinking. Oh my gosh. How funny. So, but yeah, we just went to Nashville uh, a couple of months ago, and I fell in love with it. I, I wish I could move now. So Steve Martini is the director down there. I've known Steve for a long time, and uh, his jacket says 
Martini director. So he's the Martini director. <laughs> That's awesome. He, he says 97% of his calls come in on phase two. Oh, wow. Because of downtown. Can you imagine? Yeah. You know, it's like, let me put out 200,000 drunken idiots having a good time in a, in a, yeah. you know, a 20 block radius yeah. and, and throw music in the mix. And I can only imagine what they yeah, go through. But he loves it there. He loves it there. Yeah, we, we really enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it when we went. You know, I was down, uh, I went down to visit my daughter at Christmas time. And uh, it was just, just such a wonderful, wonderful place. I've been to Nashville many, many different times. And, and I love the, the whole area down there. But uh, so she's in, uh, she's a dental hygienist down there doing really well. Nice. And she's, she's loving it. But uh, she wants to come up to Louisville and uh, go to the, to the conference with me. So. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm still waiting to see what what my agency says um, about CMCP and and the actual conference. Last year, I bunked with a friend of mine and I paid for my my airfare. So if I have oh, to do wow. that again, I'll I'll do that again. It's worth it for me. You know, it just it it's that's so depressing because it's like they don't understand the value of these conferences and the interaction and the knowledge that yeah. you bring back. My, my chief is incredibly supportive. Um, sorry, that was actually my lieutenant asking me a question. Tell him you're talking to Fletch. Okay? <laughs> he just, to... He's just asking when I graduated from SLI. <laughs> uh, last February. Um, Still no raise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. My, uh, my agency is actually incredibly supportive. Um, Good. We have, we have a new chief and she is fantastic. She is just amazing. Um, I think it's more the city politics, you know, that, that is, is difficult. It's out of state travel. It's 10 days, you yeah. know, in a hotel in another state. Um, you know, so I think, in fact, I had, I had, uh, when I went and talked to her about it, I had said, you know, we can split it up. I can try and do CMCP locally, you know, within California. She's like, no, just write a memo and put it in and we'll see what happens. She's like, hopefully wow. we can just push everything through. So she's, she's incredibly supportive. She's, she's phenomenal. I'm, I'm super lucky in, in the support that I have from my management. Um, now is your agency law enforcement fire ems and dispatch or are you just dispatch um so we're a very small police department we only have 43 sworn um and so we have our police department and dispatch uh are together okay uh, we in our public safety building we also have the fire department but we no longer dispatch for the fire department oh we okay did, we did up until january of 2020 and then they went their dispatch went to county. Okay, so, so that, that's interesting. So you're a, you're a small agency that's using county as a secondary. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Basically. Technically, right? Because you're taking you're taking the call in. Yeah, we transfer we transfer all fire and medical to LA County. Okay, so LA County does fire and medical then. All right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, do you was your did your agency ever have sworn dispatchers? They may have way back when. Um, I, I don't know. Like I said, I've only been here for four years. Okay. Um, we did have a lieutenant in charge of dispatch when I got here. Um, my position was a newly created position. So. Okay, because when you know forty years ago when I was a dispatcher. I was also a sworn special. I carried on the desk, you know, not that I needed to, but, you know, um, but I did, I also did road shifts. So, yeah, um, you know, that we, was optional. Yeah. We've been, as I'm sure everybody has been short staffed since I've been here. Um, and actually our, our uh, chief allowed us a couple of years ago to train cross train officers. Um, so we have, I think we have about five officers that are cross-trained 
in dispatch. And they actually had one, one officer, she was a corporal, was actually assigned to dispatch for two years. Oh, wow. Um, and it wasn't that she was on light duty or anything. They just knew we needed the help. So they allowed us to, to utilize her for about two years. So that was, that was really nice. Nice. Do you guys, do you guys wear uniforms or, or plain clothes? We do. We do wear uniforms. Okay. I chose not to today, but. That's all right. <laughs> well, I think, I think that's good. I think that, that provides unity to the group. Yeah, we have, um, we have a, a polo shirt that has, well, actually I have it here. It has our, has our name and our logo. Oh, okay. And it's, it, the, the color's kind of funky on here, but it's like a, it's a dark gray color. Okay. Um, and then we wear that with black um, cargo style pants. Okay. Extra large, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. It's F-L-E-T-C-H-E. No. <laughs> no, that's great. I, I think it's important for the unity of the agency to at least have shirts if you're not going to do a full uniform. But, um, you know, black cargos and a, and a polo like that, I think that's the perfect dispatch uniform. Yeah, I don't like do, the ones that are all decked out. Yeah, you know, we do like, have a we do have a class A uniform um, for formal events and things like that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but we don't we don't ever wear those unless it's a an event. Yeah, no. What, what kind of events do you go to that would require a class A? Um, the last one that we wore them out was when our new chief was sworn in. Oh, okay. That yeah, kind of so stuff. That was, the, that was the last one. I mean, we'll do it at, you know, award ceremonies or, um, you know, our annual department photo, that kind of thing. So what are you expecting out of your ENP now that you've got it? Where do you think, where do you want to take your career with that? Um, one of the, one of the primary things that I'm hoping to do is to start teaching actually with Nina. Um, so I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, Lisa, Lisa Fulton's been bugging me for quite a while. Um, oh, she doesn't know anything. She keeps, <laughs> she keeps messaging me. Have you sent in your application yet? So, um, it's good people. Yeah, the, the last, the last class that I taught at a, at a conference, I had somebody record. So I've just got to make the time to sit down and do a little editing on that and, and send it in. Good. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, in June. Thank you. I'm definitely going to be attending. Your Likewise. Class. Likewise. What, um, what, what bit of confidence or expertise or advice do you have to someone who's sitting on the fence right now going, should I do it? Should I not? Can I, can I do it? Can I not? What's your, what's your advice for the future EMPs? Um, I think if you're on the fence of whether you're going to do it or not, you know, we've, we've fought for so many years for the legitimacy of dispatch and, you know, the recognition for what it is that we actually do. You know, I, I hate the phrase, just a dispatcher. And I think, I think this test really shows the dedication to the profession, the dedication to learning all aspects of the profession. Um, and so I think, you know, if you're, if you're on the fence of whether to do that or not, just realize that you're doing it not only for yourself, but for the profession. And, you know, I, I definitely feel like it, um, provides legitimacy to what it is that we do. It's, it's a certification. It's a certification that we work very hard for and, um, we already do it. So we might as well get the re recognition for what it is that we do. Oh my God. Did I write that for you? That <laughs> <laughs> I came up with that all by myself. Wow. Oh my God. I was like, wh who wrote that for you? That was, that was <laughs> almost word for word. Perfect. You know what? That that's fantastic. Um, seriously, that's, that's exactly you summed it. I don't think I could have written it that well, but I'm going to sure Thank steal you. it. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Well, great. Well, listen, Rebecca, thank you very much for sitting down with us. Congratulations on being an ENP. Thank, thank you. you for what you do and for what you've done for, you know, umpteen billion years since you were five years old. And uh, <laughs> five. 
Really appreciate uh, finally getting together with you here. I know we've had a couple of rough starts. I know. Back. I apologize. That's kind of the story of my life, I think. <laughs> you know what? It's you know, it's usually my schedule that's throwing people off, so I don't mind. But uh, I'm really glad. It just goes to show you, you know, you wait for it and it's the best ones. Thank so. you. All right. Well, thanks very much for sitting down and uh, thanks for what you do again. Have a great I day. I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. And Bye-bye. I will see you in June. Okay. We'll see you there. Bye. Well, that wraps up this episode of Off the Cuff, Confessions of an ENP. I'm Mark Fletcher, ENP, and I'm the Vice President of Public Safety Solutions at 911 Inform. Off the Cuff is sponsored by 911 Inform, delivering next generation 911 solutions to the enterprise today and making every second count. Visit them on the web at 911inform.com. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at Fletch911. Check out all my blogs and podcasts at Fletch.tv. And be sure to like and subscribe below. That way you'll be immediately notified whenever a new podcast is published. Thanks so much for listening. If you're in public safety, thanks for what you do. Take care and have a great day.